Howdy, folks. It's Dr. Flo. <laughs> I'm your motivational uh, singer and speaker who reminds you online every day that you are loved and lovable as a soul coach and a comrade and Sherpa through life. It is a thrill to serve Love and Action Network on all the platforms and to be here with you all today, including Mooser, who we see uh, over with my co-pilot for the day, Tara Praolo Studio. This one's going to be quick and dirty, folks, because... Um, we are wanting to maximize our time today and also make sure that we uh, take delight, that we take delight in the goodness that's coming towards us. Um, last week, I ended the week talking about self-care, and I'm going to read a bit uh, of what I read last week to get us all caught up on what it means to take care of yourself. A lot of us want to have a more soothing condition. We want to have brighter days. We want our days to be joyous and secure and bright. And we want to be happy and healthy and free from all suffering and all the other things we say here in network. Um, and the way that you get into a bright, joyous and secure future is by learning what self-care is and then giving it to yourself, okay? Self-care is any activity that you do to take care of yourself. It rejuvenates your body, refreshes your mind, or realigns your spirit. It relaxes and refuels you. It gets you ready for a new day or a fresh start. It's the practices, rituals, and meaningful activities that you do just for you that help you feel safe, grounded, happy, and fulfilled. You all within the network have probably seen that I have recalibrated when I'm appearing in public spaces and pouring it out in these ways. A lot of it has to do with um, the fact that I thought that I was caring for myself by caring for the community. Those are two different things. I thought that if I cared for the community enough and poured out on camera and beyond enough that I would feel the refilling of my tank. That's actually not what happened for me. And that's not what's true for me. I was actually not caring for myself by caring for the community so much. Uh, well, like, well, you're, you're an influencer and a streamer and a coach and you don't have a packed schedule. And, you know, how could you be overwhelmed? Well, we start thinking about Self-care being the practices, rituals, and meaningful activities that you do just for you that help you feel safe, grounded, happy, and fulfilled. You can see that a lot of us spend a lot of our time fulfilling the needs of other people on not caring for ourselves. So we want to anchor that idea this week. The activities that qualify as self-care are amazingly unique and personalized to who you are. What you like, and in large part, uh, your other divine signs and things like that. No matter which self-care activities speak to you in your unique, unique, in your unique place in the universe, unique New York, unique New York, unique New York, unique New York. I'll be a prolific speaker one day, folks. Just hang with me. Stick in it. But no matter which of those self-care activities speak to you in your unique place in the universe on any given day, it will fall into one of the following self-care categories, each of which pertains to a different aspect of your life. Physical self-care, emotional self-care, social self-care, mental self-care, spiritual self-care, and practical self-care. Um, and I'm going to use the sacral chakras affirmation of I feel to ask you the question today, community, how do you feel in your physical? How do you feel in your emotional center? How do you feel in your social? Do you need to engage with more people right now? Or do you need to subtract some energies in order to find home? How are you feeling in your mental? That's a big question. How was your mental health today? 
Do you feel like you have the resources and the tools and the apps and the hotlines and the supportive systems and networks that you need in order to make it through today just for today? How is your spiritual self-care? How are you feeling spiritually? Are you feeling connected to all that that is? Are you are you feeling connected to something bigger than yourself? Or are you feeling isolated, alone, and afraid as if it's only you in the universe? Love and lovable, but... I know the feeling personally in my life of being surrounded by 9 million people in New York City and still feeling alone. I've cried on the train, surrounded by hundreds of people in a city of 9 million people stacked on top of each other because of a loneliness and a feeling of isolation inside of myself and my heart. No delight in sight, just despair. because of what life can do to us. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. How do you feel about your practical self-care? That Get Down Coffee, sponsored by Tara Praolo Ministries. That's also what TPM stands for. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, we're gonna pick a card that's gonna take us deeper. Sunflower, I see that you're still in the space. Thank you for being here and being loved and lovable, not because you're here, but just because you are. Are you interested in telling me when to stop today? Bless you. This feels better. Everything about it feels better. Oh, we got to stop. Okay. Did you want the top or bottom card? When you can delight in the moment. And then when I was in the shower today, I was thinking about this. I've had moments of absolute peace and serenity and groundedness in my art. We've had strings of days before where my throat was not pinched and clenched and cinched and benched and trenched. But are you committed to staying dedicated to your delight? Are you... Are you dedicated to learning the lesson that you need to learn and then letting it stick this time? Or do you want to wander off into the bushes? I'm choosing to get the lessons of my life this time. Today's word is expansive. Every day I'm learning new things and expanding into my highest potential. Every day, I'm learning new things and expanding into my highest potential. Last Friday, Tara did me a great honor and service of coming into my rehearsal and I would call it a cleaning, but it was more of a power washing of the vote of the vote check and its entanglement i was open to learning new things i'm also open to this sneeze that's trying to emerge while i'm also expelling air from the opposite end as well oh my gosh <clears throat> yeah nailed it <laughs> Expanding into my highest potential. Do you feel that you are capable of expanding into your highest potential?
Do you feel the delight of being better today than you were yesterday? Do you feel the delight of recognizing your wins? There are some things in my life, there were and there are some things in my life that I was wondering if I had actually gotten those lessons. And life has been sending challenges, which was a past week theme. To allow me to see that I'm not standing still, nor have I ever been standing still, nor have you ever been standing still. We're actually growing. And we're allowed to delight in that growth as well. You're allowed to pass your test. You're allowed to pass your test. You're allowed to get the certificate. You're allowed to give yourself the certificate cross the stage and move on to the new. When you are aligned with your sacral chakra, you will be able to have healthy pleasure in your life. Your creative energies will flow. You'll be emotionally expressive and you will be aligned with human connection. When you are not aligned with your sacral chakra, you will kill joy. <clears throat> you will not be able to see the hope in your life. You will not be able to find the gratitude. You'll not be able to see the opportunities right before your eyes. Paying attention to how you feel will point you into the direction of what is happy, healthy, and free from suffering. Every week we pick up a new theme uh, from a guiding text called 52 Weeks of Conscious Contact with the Divine, uh, written by Melody Beattie. This week we step into inventory as a theme. Uh, I'm going to take <laughs> I'm going to take page one. Uh, into the first sentence of uh, day one. And then I'll let you pick up. It's also a snap to see. All right, folks. This week, we're going to be focusing on the theme of inventory. Uh, this teaching is built around the 12-step traditions from Alcoholics Anonymous. So you're going to feel overlap if you're in one of those healing communities. Remember that healing is accessible to everyone. You don't need money to heal. You don't need better friends to heal. You don't need a different family to heal. You can actually choose to heal for free today using some of the tools um, that we provide and also the things that are in the wonderful internet. And I want to just really be clear that you don't have to suffer anymore. You don't have to struggle anymore. Um, you don't have to take that narrative into February of 2024. You can be free and at peace today. The first time I took an inventory of myself, it was because I had to. I was in a treatment program. A judge had sentenced me there for as long as it takes. <laughs> the treatment staff wasn't going to let me out until I sat down and took a look at myself. A searching and fearless moral inventory is what step four of Alcoholics Anonymous recommends. I was overwhelmed by the process. All I saw was this big blur of self. I started writing about one small aspect of myself that I was able to recognize. Within minutes, I saw more. This inventory process took on a life of its own. 
what I was aware of about myself, was I aware about myself? Let's try one more time. What was I aware of about myself that was a problem? <laughs> what was I aware of about myself that was a problem? What was bugging me most? The thing about myself I least wanted any other human being to know. Things like Dr. Flo is imperfect and sometimes forgets how to read and how to sing and do all of these wonderful things that he does professionally. He just, he just fucking forgets, you know? Uh, it's just a thing that happens, right? I wouldn't want anyone to know that I am imperfect. What was the, what was the thing I least wanted to admit to myself? What did I fear and whom did I resent? I'll read that one more time because I got lost in my selective dyslexia. Shout out to all the dyslexic people. Uh, we are rooting for your access to things. Please listen intently. Uh, that's what we're here for as well. There's a podcast for that, for all of our dyslexic friends. Uh, what was I aware of about myself that was a problem? What was bugging me most, the thing about myself I least wanted any other human being to know? What was the thing I least wanted to admit to myself? What did I fear and whom did I resent? Oof. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. We were supposed to also inventory the good qualities about ourselves. I couldn't find any of those. You're persistent, the clergy person at treatment said. I hung on to that asset for years. I thought it was my only good quality. It's an interesting phenomenon how quickly and easily it is to see qualities we like in other people. It's also a snap to see what we don't like in other people, qualities that we think they should change. Taking other people's inventories is a breeze. Taking our own is hard work. The year was 1982. Most people listening to this were not alive in 1982, including myself. Including myself. None of us were here in 1982. So the year was 1982. My husband at the time wanted to go to Las Vegas. I wanted him to stay home, but I didn't know how to express how I felt. About the third night he was gone, I felt the anxiety in my gut. I knew he was out of control drinking again. I had a party planned for the next morning. I was throwing an open house for a neighbor graduating from college. 80 people, that's so many people, 80 people were due to show up. My husband was supposed to be home to help. I didn't clean my house. I didn't prepare the food. I sat calling him in Vegas, dialing a number over and over again for eight straight hours. What he's doing is crazy, I kept thinking. What he's doing is wrong and nuts. About 10 o'clock that night, I saw the light. 80 people are coming to my home tomorrow. And here I sit, dialing a number that will not be answered. He might be out of control, I thought, but what I'm doing is crazy. Sometimes we need to take our own inventory to get out of an uncomfortable stuck place, to look at patterns and see what's going on. Other times, looking at our own behaviors gives us the freedom to finally have and live our lives. Taking our own inventory doesn't have to be a big, gruesome job, although sometimes it is. Rather, it can be a way to stop pointing our finger at others and take responsibility for ourselves. The value of the week. Call it taking stock of ourselves or cleaning our side of the street. Taking our own inventory is the value of the week. Taking our own inventory is the value of the week. It's so hard to stay on our side of the tennis net. Um, people will even say that we're selfish for taking only our own inventory and being concerned with the matters of our heart and all of those self-care 
areas that we talked about. Um, but it's important that we do it for ourselves, especially so that we don't blame other people, as I have a PhD in doing, um, for my mistakes and for the lessons that I must learn in life. On page 21, folks, it says, what I was aware of, again, what was I aware of about myself that was a problem? What are you aware of about yourself? What am I aware of about myself that is the problem? I don't have many people around me, as you can see on these live streams and in my circles right now, and that's fine because we're always talking about the awareness to our problems. We actually want to get free in this life, not the next one. What was bugging me most, the thing about myself I least wanted any other human being to know? The thing about myself that I least want any other human being to know um, is... Uh, how much I can get stuck in my freeze. As a very courageous person, as a person who accomplishes big things and shows up on cameras and things, you'd be surprised how many people are both in a courageous moment, but also in a place of catatonic frozenness at the same time. Um, and sometimes that makes us as leaders feel like we don't know what we're doing or like we don't belong in leadership because we are fearful of our bright, joyful, and secure futures like everyone else. And so it bugs me sometimes that I'm so hyper visible in not knowing what I don't know like every other human. What was the thing that I least wanted to admit to myself? That the show must go on. Um, and what did I fear? Like everyone else, rejection, not fitting in, things that don't matter when it comes to accomplishing a full and successful life. But I want to pause there and just answer those in full vulnerability because understanding the answers to those questions um, can unlock doors. Uh, I'm going to pick it up and place it somewhere else for later because that's really, really juicy. Shall we continue? We shall. Day two. Day, Day two. That's today, y'all. It's short. Short. When all we can see is what other people are doing wrong to us, it's time to take the focus off them and put it on ourselves. I'm going to read that one more time. When all we can see is what other people are doing wrong to us, it's time to take the focus off them and put it on ourselves application of the week whenever we feel defensive whenever we find ourselves talking a lot about what others are doing wrong whenever we just as soon not look at ourselves it's time to do just that can you read it one more time please <laughs> yes i'll read the whole thing one more time when all we can see is what other people are doing wrong to us it's time to take the focus off them and put it on ourselves. The application is whenever we feel defensive, whenever we find ourselves talking a lot about what others are doing wrong, whenever we just as soon not look at ourselves, it's time to do just that. It is. 
Y'all, like I was I was talking, um, I, I don't talk to many people, as you know, because I, I don't really love uh, humans. I love humans and I don't like to talk to humans. Um, I, I really enjoy my quiet time and I really enjoy being with myself. Um, but, you know, I, I hear a lot from a lot of people like, oh, this person did this thing to me this many years ago. And, oh, you know, I can't, I can't talk to this person because blah, da, 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 da. Oh, like they did this to me. And it was like, and I have these relationships too, of like, you know, somebody said something years ago. And so we don't talk anymore. And it's like, how much am I holding on to that? right? How much am I holding on to the fact that they did something that I perceived was wrong years ago? Instead of saying, okay, sure, I felt that was wrong. I probably was wrong in some place as well. And moving on and allowing for forgiveness and allowing for that relationship to take some other form, right? Like we have to allow, um, the idea, and I feel like I've been talking around this all week uh, since Friday on Spill the Beans of like, we cannot control other people. And believing that everything that everybody else in the world does is wrong does not serve you. Judgment does not serve you. It just keeps you trapped. Control just keeps you trapped especially when you're waiting for someone else to do exactly what you want them to do. No one will ever do that. Yeah. People are always going to say mean things. People are always going to say hurtful things. People are always going to do things that you perceive are against you. Right. But the only thing that you can actually do is to respond in yourself and let it go. Right. It doesn't serve you. If it doesn't serve you, why are you still bringing it up? If it doesn't serve you, why haven't you moved on yet? Right? You see that a lot. I see, I see that a lot, a lot, a lot of hurt, you know, People hanging on to that hurt and saying, well, I'm in forgiveness. I'm in, you know, I forgave that person a long time ago. Did you really? Did you really? Because if you're talking about it with me, then you didn't. You, you, you never moved on. And it's still about them. You're still allowing them to have the power that you should be claiming for yourself. Let it go. Look at yourself. Are you leading your life the way that you want to lead? Okay. Good. Move on. That's all this is saying. It's hard. It's hard to not blame others. I hear I hear Flo moving through that a lot. And it is very hard. Uh, Flo was talking about this last week, about like the childhood trauma and nobody, nobody is immune, right? We all... Literally every single one of us can blame our parents for the reason that we are the way we are, right? We can all sit there and be like, well, my daddy, my mommy, my grandma, my so-and-so, my auntie did this to me. And this is why I am the way I am. This teacher did this thing to me. Okay. And... Is that really the way that you want to lead? Is that really the way you want to empower yourself and embody yourself? Or is it just easier to blame that person than to take inventory of what you're doing with your life now? Right? I'll tell you, it's a lot easier to blame another person than to blame yourself. 1000% easier. 1000%. It feels a lot better. It feels a lot better to blame other people. It we do this all the time, though. We do this all the time. We make other people responsible for our happiness. It's like we have the ability to contain our own 
delight and our own happy and our own joy index and our own, you know, threshold for joy and all the other things you talk about community. But then we, we hand the, the switch or the controls to our happiness to other people and then expect and, and then wonder why we're not happy. Right. No one, no one wants to control your happiness because they're so busy being in the center of their own me movie. And what we do here is very unique in Love and Action Network in that we offer 24-7 access to loved and lovable content and loved and lovable resources and loved and lovable conversations in order to help you keep your cork floating along the river of life. Um. And because we are lovable, it is enough. Uh, while you were speaking, Tara, I'm gonna land today by talking about uh, the serenity prayer and also a few of our just for today's from Emotional Anonymous, which is a 12 step program to help you get emotionally sober. Uh, a lot of us are drunk on our own emotions, uh, disillusioned and drunk on our own feelings and Emotions Anonymous, which is a free program to everyone, so there's no cost uh, prohibition, um, is something that we can use in order to stay and to get emotionally sober. Serenity Prayer, of course, as you all know, is all about a higher power, sham lama, you know, whatever you want to call it. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, I will try to live through this day only not tackling all of my problems at once. I could do something at this moment that would discourage me if I had to continue it for a lifetime. Just for today, I will try to be happy, realizing happiness does not depend on what others do or say or what happens around me. Happiness is a result of being at peace with myself. Last one, just for today. I will try to go out of my way to be kind to someone I meet. I'll be considerate, talk low, and look as good as I can. I will not engage in unnecessary criticism or finding fault, nor try to improve or regulate anybody except myself. There's been a huge theme of emotional and physical and spiritual self-responsibility, self-determination and encouragement that's been coming out this week. That's not to confuse you, to make you think that you're alone in your journey. Uh, everyone is welcomed and invited to step into the yummy and the goodness, but just own and take inventory of what you have Surrender it to higher power and start working with the tools to get free once and for all. Some of the slogans we use in Emotions Anonymous are let go and let God or higher power. You are not alone. You are given permission to take one day at a time. You can live and let live. You can put first things first. You can look for the good. Know yourself. Be honest with yourself. Like I told a dear community member yesterday, you know, everyone's wearing so many masks these days. I don't know if what you're showing me, Tara and, and, and crew, I don't know if what y'all are showing me is the real deal or not. You know, there's a moment in the conversation yesterday where I had the opportunity to, to pry and dig deeper into the narrative. I went, oh no, reveal to me what you want me to see. And then we will address the needs of the community in that way. I cannot say that enough. Speak clearly and directly what your needs are, and we will do our best in the community to meet that need according to the collective and individual. Not trying to improve or, re or regulate anyone, but really having an inner reflection on ourselves. Coming home to ourselves and saying, like, yo, I need to start later in my day with this particular part of what I'm working on. 
and then fill in the ease of it. I'm excited to May you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be free of all suffering. May you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be free of all suffering. May you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be free of all suffering. And may a bigger love hold you in its big, big hands today, okay? May you find delight in your life. May you see the goodness in your life today. And may it grow bigger, 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 bigger until it overtakes everything purifies, makes you new, allows you to know that you are deeply and profoundly loved and lovable. We've been live for hours, Tara. I hope something stuck. Y'all stay groovy. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, I should say, Visit loveandlovable.org to learn more about Dr. Flo and the love experience. Visit loveandlovable.org to learn more about Love City Academy and all of the knowledge we're handing down. People pay $25,000 for knowledge that we offer for 25 bucks on the internet. Uh, if you like a deal, <laughs> limited time offers for, on some of them, and you want to grow, loveandlovable.org. If you'd like to know more about our healing practitioners and hosts and leaders, there's an org chart right on the main page, including uh, some of the new positions that we're looking to fill here in network. And if you just want to be around positive energy, I recognized yesterday from one of our community visitors, uh, unannounced, which please stop doing that, uh, but we'll keep working at it. Um, I learned that you all aren't necessarily uh, in love with me. Uh, you think that you want to be close to me. And sure, that's cool because my ashe and my God light and my D light is bright. So I understand why you'd want to be close. But the truth is that people benefit here from being in a community of people who encourage each other, people who laugh every day, people who are in joyful communication. That's what they miss. That's what they're trying to double dutch into, the ability to be comfortable with people who have an upward trajectory and higher vibration and mobility in life. So if you're looking to hang out with people who are not like your stinking thinking former friends, your stinking thinking former family members, and other boring people, they're quite boring, folks. They're saying things like drop, 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 drop. I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. Why not say love, 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 love? Why can't we pack these rallies around a unifying love and positive message? I'm hopeful that we can because we're already doing it. So uh, loveandlovable.org in the link in bios to tap in. We would love to hear from you and see how you'd like to plug in in a healthy and harmonious way. And uh, we will, again, because I can't end this live apparently, uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you to everybody watching over on the Substack and also listening on the podcast. Y'all are amazing.